Hello class, and welcome to my discussion on historical scholarship. First, I want to start off by saying, according to course guidelines, historians must be honest and objective in their research and must be dedicated to a reasoned investigative reconstruction of primary sources. Um, so this week, our topic was to um, go onto the Oxford Scholarship online database and find at least two articles pertaining to our preferred research that we've been discussing out in previous um, discussions on a possible dissertation topic. Um, my topic for my dissertation as of right now is women and the student activism in 1960, a topic that's not very well focused on um, when you do the reading and research of the student activism. A lot of it is from the male dominated side of it. Um, very few women have spoken out or have really stepped up in finding research on the topic. Um, that being said, the two articles I focused on were um, between two organizations. One was the Free Speech Movement, um, which started in Berkeley in the 1960s, and the Stem Students for Democratic Society, which also started in the 60s, um, following up on the Civil Rights Movement. These two articles uh, really, f well, these two um, sources came from books. Um, the free speech movement um, topic came from Bettina Apotheker. Um, her essay article was, her essay top title was Gender Politics and the FSM, the Free Speech Movement, a, Medi a Mediation on Women and Freedom of Speech. In this source, she really spoke of this idea that she didn't realize that um, women weren't seen the same as men in her early activism in the 1960s um, through Berkeley. Um, she was one of the heads of the freedom free speech movement and was one of the first women to speak. Um, she introduced the topic by talking about her, um, how she was actually standing on top of the police car when one of the gentlemen at Berkeley um, was arrested and she gave a speech. Um, and she followed that up by talking about how she really I, idolized her father and she never really saw herself, I guess, as in an, a woman's idea. Um, she never saw, sat back and thought, you know, this is a woman's job, this is a man's job. She just went out there and did what she had to. Um, so it was a really interesting perspective to see that a woman who, you know, was very active in the social activist or the student activism in the early 60s, who really brought about um, this idea of strength and um, not holding herself behind in the idea of women uh, feminism, because she didn't even realize that there was an issue with it until later on. Um, the other source that I found was by David Barber. Um, the part of the chapter of the book is The New Left and Feminism. Uh, 1965 to 1969 in the book, A Hard Rain Fell, SDS and Why It fa Failed. Um, so his approach was more about speaking about the women who started in the civil rights movement and how um, the, you know, the women of, um, well, the white women of the time were held in, you know, executive jobs, but they were still not seen as, you know, other than women. Um, he spoke of two specific women. Hayden was one of them and they had put together a document talking about how women were, you know, objectified and told that they could only do, um, you know, secretarial work, even if they hold high positions in the um, SNCC. Um, and then it went further into the student activism and how that brought about this idea of uh, feminism and really changing the perspectives of, of women and the ideas. Um, so both these groups of people and both these uh, women or all these women involved, they really set up a side, you know, a focus on this idea um, that they got from the free speech movement and the civil rights movement through the organizations they used that, um, that would eventually develop into a full-fledged um, movement as well, the women's liberation movement of the 1960s and 70s. Um, so that is all I have on that right now. Um, thank you for listening.